From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The government of the Bahamas has today announced that the country will receive its first set of vaccines starting the second half of February. In a statement released, the OPM said, quote, the government of the Bahamas has received formal notification from COVAX of the estimated COVID-19 vaccine dose allocation for the first phase of delivery to the Bahamas. COVAX, a coalition led by the World Health Organization and Vaccine Alliance, informed Bahamian health authorities that the Bahamas could receive 100,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine starting the second half of February through the second quarter of 2021. The AstraZeneca vaccine has received emergency use listing approval from WHO. The National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee is also expected to hold a press conference on Thursday at 5 p.m. when more details about the COVID-19 vaccine distribution plan will be released. Pick up a copy of tomorrow's Tribune for more on this story. Hundreds of nurses gathered outside the Ministry of Health yesterday morning, waiting up to three hours in some cases for Health Minister Randwood Wells to come and address their overtime pay concerns. The nurses could take similar action as early as today, after ministry officials eventually responded to them in a dissatisfactory way, according to Bahamas Nurses Union President Amantra Williams. Nurses in the Department of Health have not received any overtime pay since the COVID-19 pandemic began, affecting the Bahamas in March 2020. The Tribune was told, despite the fact that many of them work 16-hour shifts three or four days a week. Shaniqua Cox, the BNU's general secretary, said nurses are sick and tired. A man was shot and killed on DeVoe Street yesterday morning, becoming the nation's 11th murder victim for the year. Police did not reveal the victim's identity. However, the Tribune understands he is 38-year-old Anwar Tucker, a.k.a. Bats. Distraught family members and friends reacted furiously to his death, with loud cries and wails heard at the scene. Police press liaison officer ASP Oddly Peters told reporters that shortly before 9 a.m., officers were alerted to a shooting incident in the area of DeVoe Street, east of Market Street. Upon arrival at that scene, officers found a man's body lying on the ground next to a vehicle with apparent gunshot wounds. Paramedics were called but pronounced him dead at the scene. According to ASP Peters, the incident unfolded when two gunmen approached the victim near a bar and fired shots in his direction, fatally wounding him. The Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana hopes to submit its final report surrounding the use of marijuana to the government in the first quarter of this year, according to BNCM co-chair Quinn McCartney. Speaking to the Tribune yesterday, Mr. McCartney said the body is one step closer to fulfilling its mandate from the Minnesota administration now that a national survey to gauge Bahamians' feelings on marijuana use has been completed. Describing the survey as the final piece of the puzzle for the group's work, Mr. McCartney said once the commission finishes its review of the survey's findings, it will then include the information in a final report and submit it to the office of the Prime Minister. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Donald Trump endangered the lives of all members of Congress when he aimed a mob of supporters like a loaded cannon at the U.S. Capitol. House Democrats said today in making their most detailed case yet for why the former president should be convicted and permanently barred from office. Trump denied the allegations through his lawyers and called the trial unconstitutional. The dueling filings offer the first public glimpse of the arguments that will be presented to the Senate beginning next week. Shipping containers have become overflow mortuaries for the dead from COVID-19 in South Africa, while some other African nations are now looking to China for the next wave of vaccine doses. South Africa is working to launch its vaccination campaign in mid-February after its first delivery of vaccines on Monday. One million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine produced by the Serum Institute of India. An additional 500,000 are coming later in February. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A robust high-pressure system over the Bahamas, along with a strong cold front moving out of the southeast Bahamas, will create strong winds, hazardous seas, and chilly conditions throughout the chain of islands. Boaters are strongly advised to remain in port and beachgoers to refrain from entering the waters due to strong gusty winds, high seas, very rough surf, and the elevated risk of dangerous rip currents. Motorists and pedestrians should exercise extreme 
extreme caution while traversing coastal roads. In the northwest and central Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, chilly, and very windy, with the slight chance of isolated showers. Boaters should remain in port. Winds west to northwest at 20 to 30 knots with gusts to gale force at times. Seas 8 to 12 feet in moderate to large northeasterly swells. In the southeast Bahamas, it'll be cloudy, chilly, and windy, with isolated showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms. Small craft should remain in port. Winds west, northwest at 15 to 25 knots, gusty at times. Seas 5 to 8 feet with moderate northeasterly swells. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 64 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 54 with a wind chill of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun will set at 554 and will rise tomorrow morning at 651. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.